Hello, it's Scott Manley here. I'm standing in a stairwell because apparently the bar is too busy and loud. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm standing here recording a second one of my videos. I asked people on Twitter what they wanted to hear about and I think Sagittarius A Star, or the, the new news from there, came out as top. So we'll leave the exploding rockets for later. Commiserations to the D.A.R.E. team at the University of Delft in the Netherlands. They, their uh, rocket uh, unfortunately broke up about 20 seconds after launch. Anyway, yeah, big news is new results from the core of our galaxy, Sagittarius A star. It's called A star because it's like this active radio source, and it's believed that that is a supermassive black hole, about 4 million solar masses off it right at the very core of the galaxy. Now, for the last few months, or for early, since earlier this year, astronomers have been you know, rushing to get their hardware working at top priority because there is a star among many stars that have been orbiting it. There's one particular one called S2. It's a blue B-type star, which means it's very, very luminous. And that's one of the reasons that we can see it, despite the fact that it's over 8,000 parsecs away. So this, uh, this star is orbiting this, the core of the galaxy, this uh, giant black hole. And, you know, in the last couple of months, it made its close approach to the uh, to the black hole. And when it did that, of course, it's coming in at peri, I don't know what you call it, peri black hole in us. <laughs> um, yeah, peri galacticon or something. It, uh, yeah, it picked up a lot of speed because there's a lot of gravity, obviously, in four million set stellar masses. And yeah, it was moving several percent of the speed of light. So they've tracked this with great accuracy. In particular, they used the VLT in the Southern Hemisphere. I mentioned this in my video on uh, angular resolution of telescopes. That's the one where they can have four different telescopes and combine the light so that they create a telescope with the effective aperture of 160 meters, I think it is. And that means they can get unprecedented levels of angular resolution. And it's actually really fascinating to look at uh, there was a movie that was published in relation to this paper which shows the stars orbiting the core of the galaxy and it's like three decades or something worth of data. And you can actually see uh, as the data improves over time as new telescopes come in. So this one in particular was going to fly past uh, at your know, closest approach, pick up a lot of speed and therefore be a perfect candidate to test general relativity. Now, okay, we've tested general relativity under many circumstances. We've tested it in low Earth orbit. We've tested it, you know, during solar eclipses, but we haven't tested it next to a supermassive black hole. So, great. So what they were looking for was a redshift of various, you know, parameters. They wanted to see whether the gravitational field would uh, produce a gravitational reddening on top of the reddening that you would see from the object moving, you know, radially, but also as it moves across a you know, significant fraction of the speed of light, that would also generate, you know, you, you can get redshift just by an object moving sideways across your field of view because it is actually moving and therefore its clock has to start running slower. So there's like three different redshifts they had to actually determine, three, three different redshifts they had to determine here. And to nobody's surprise at all, these things exactly did what Einstein did and didn't do what Newton predicted. So this is great. It's been another test of general relativity. And, uh, you know, they're going to continue to look at this, obviously. What the next thing they're going to look for is whether they can see precession in the orbit. That is, when it goes in and comes out, the orbit will move around slightly because when the star is at closest approach and moving at a fraction of the speed of light, relativity kicks in and it means that it spends a little more time down there before getting thrown out because of various conservation laws. This was something that was obviously observed in Mercury uh, many, many years ago, but uh, you know, observing this around a supermassive black hole is an important test of general relativity, so we'll see whether that happens. Uh, one other thing that did come out of this is that the scientists were able to model the orbit of the star a whole lot better, and so now they have a much better idea of where the black hole is. So we've known, you know, angular locations, but we haven't known radial distances with great precision. But now their, uh, their prediction gives it something like 8,122 parsecs, plus or minus 31. So that's like 0.4% accuracy. So it's the most accurate uh, estimation of the location of the core of our galaxy yet. 
So yes, all very excited rock star science and Sagittarius A star and all that. And I will be back tomorrow with another video. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.